Ness, you've stood on the eight power spots of the Earth. From these, you created Magicant, the realm of your mind. In Magicant, there's beauty, kindness, sorrow, and hatred. Of course, there's an evil and violent side of you. The Sea of Eden sits at the center of those feelings. It takes you to the truth about yourself. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and I like to start my episodes in the most wacky and convoluted way possible. I also like Ness to have a beard, which is what he has right now. He has the best beard in the world. Uh, last episode, we vi we came across the 8th Your Sanctuary location, and by came across, I mean we battled tooth and nail a bunch of fire-based enemies to reach it, and we got the 8th melody and were tr transported to the realm of Ness's mind. This is his dream world, where everything he has encountered, or he thinks, or he believes, or whatever, becomes true, and I would like to talk to this duck. G-g-g-g-g-g-g. Annette was a quiet, small town, wasn't it? Yes, it was, and it still is. At least I like to think so. So, uh, I, last episode I did talk about this. Uh, this pad has my family on it, with the exception of my father, because you never actually see Ness's father in the game. Uh, it, unless you count the phone as seeing him, but it's just a phone. Brother Ness, the Sea of Eden is at the end of Magicant. Other people can't get close to it. It's a strange place. Is there, is there anything I can do for you? Yes, actually, I would like you to store the Casey Bat, since I, d I will not need it this episode, uh, so it's just taking up extra inventory space. The Casey Bat? Don't worry, I'll keep it safe. Do you have anything else from you want me to store? No, I do not. I don't want anything either. Okay, let's talk to King and ignore my mom, because she'll just have me eat steak. Whimper wine. I lived in your house before you were born. Ness used to be small and weak. And now, King... Wow. If Ness is like 13, and that vision we saw last episode was accurate, King is like 13 and a half, maybe 14, so he's he's actually getting pretty old. That's kind of sad. Let's talk to this guy. This is the realm of Magicant, which your mind created. Why don't you explore your mind? Take your time, Ness. I will. And with every mood, Ness's dream world Magicant changes. Which makes me wonder, um, I think it's- I think it is reflecting his mood, so I should be able to try and guess what Ness thinks of each of these things, since we haven't been able to really get his opinion on anything, because he doesn't say anything, but I think this is confirmation enough about his thoughts. Hi, this shop specializes in puddings and pendants. You'd like to buy some, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. I don't care about the magic pudding, it's an item that restores 40 PP, but I do care about the earth pendant, which gives 16 defense, and a- a protection against fire, freeze, and flash attacks. And I don't want it right now, but when I get back into the real world, I want to give the the sea pendant back to Paula, and then I want to equip the earth pendant onto Ness, since he doesn't need that much protection, so I'm just going to get this item for him. Brother Ness! Oh wait, I already did this. Let's give this back to her, since I don't need it now. I need to make inventory space, because there are a lot of items in this area. Uh, one or two of them are good. Um, this is actually one of the areas where there are hardly any good items, but there I believe there are one or two that are amazing. Um, is there any? No. So, I, I would like to- I'd like to investigate that. Okay, goodbye. Don't talk to me. Alright, let's move on. Uh, the first half of Magicant will be focused on talking to people, because, uh, Ness is reflecting on things- on decisions he's made, like Everdread. Whether or not fighting him was a good idea, or taking his money was a better idea. Maybe Ness was involved in his death. Ness, maybe you don't want to hear this, but you remind me of myself when I was young. I can't do anything more for you. Good luck, Ness. But, Everdread has no hard feelings about it, and I, I said his death, but it was never actually shown. Also in here is a telephone and an ATM. But it was never actually shown that he died, but I I actually have a feeling that he did, just based on that. Ever, all the other characters that we talk to don't disappear when we talk to them, and that just makes me think that maybe Everdread did die. Ness, did you learn how to tell what time I'm indicating? Uh, there's no real, like, shorthand, but... I believe it's like 12.14, something like that, or if it's not, then it would be about, it would be 3 o'clock. So 12.14 or 3 o'clock. You kicked my butt badly. I won't forget! So, we're gonna be talking about a bunch of enemies, and I'm probably gonna be a little bit sleep drunk this episode since I didn't get, like, any sleep. 
uh, last night. I was up late watching fireworks, so I'm probably going to be a little bit crazy this episode, as you can judge by the intro. You destroyed my pride. Arrgh. So yeah, that fun times ahead. I need to get more sleep, but nothing I can do about it here. I'm just going to have to roll with it, record, and hope that my sleep drunkenness doesn't make me too crazy to watch. It's me. I'm you when you were younger. Hey, let's play ball. Do you prefer reading comics or playing games? What? You're busy. So Ness's past self. That's that's actually pretty interesting, um, because I I would say that his mood with this is with the color is uh, night and day. His past self is so much different from his previous self. His past self is carefree, doesn't really care about anything, and his future self, right now, is has a lot of weight on his shoulders. I'd like you to take your time, because this country will disappear when you wake up. And that's exactly what I plan on doing. Peace! We haven't played together lately. Gaga! Fresh! Ness, Pokey took my snack. La la la! My name's Nico, let's run and sing and dance. Yeah, long time no see, Ness. Wah, Ness, let's play. Wah, Waluigi. <laughs> uh, this is a piece of caramel, which I don't care about. Like I said, there are going to be a lot of presents that I'm just going to be skipping because they're not good. I want to conserve my inventory space. Actually, this will be pretty in uh, educational because pokey. Um, Ness, you're so lucky. I envy you. I have no luck. But, Ness, well, okay. Let's be friends forever, alright? You got it, Pokey. No matter what happens to you, I'll always give you a second chance. So let's go up here and uh, talk to this fish and then go into that building. Because that's interesting. There's a grave there. It's a weirdly shaped building and I want to go inside. Ness, I still, f still feel pain where you wounded me. Let's go inside. Bananas are the magical wand of vegetarian sorcerers everywhere. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Not Nintend Place Earthbound because it's Ness. But this time, I'm going to be talking to my courage. Apparently, I don't know where it went, but it's it's here now. I thought fo uh, he'll follow me in Magikin, but only in Magikin. And this is a flying man. So he's like Falco, but he doesn't need a plane. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of strange. But last episode, we talked about the disruption or the desynchronization of a parallel universe because uh, we took microwaves, poured them into clouds so that we could stop rain by making pretzels because pretzels are kind of losing their meaning. But yeah. I'm actually gonna let the other guy talk now because my voice is horrible. Hey guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, somebody took the microphone. This evening, Eden is filled with ultimate intelligence. Like I said, I'm gonna be a little bit crazy, and I may be also a little bit insane. Uh, you can't go there unless you're truly ready. It's a place where you can touch the the truth of the universe. Going there may bring sorrow. To that, the world turns dark. And right here is where the talking tour portion of the of the area stops and the enemy part begins. There are presents disguised as enemies and enemies, or, and, I, uh, and presents, just straight up being presents. Uh, this is a loaded die, a dice, die, I don't know, loaded dice, and the only thing it does is a little bit, actually it doesn't even do damage, but it invites enemies to the battlefield, which is dangerous, except the electric swoosh swooshes are not really that bad because I have the Franklin badge, but there is one enemy that I will be probably bumping into this episode, and it's horrible. I've encountered it before, it's the uncontrollable sphere, an, en an enemy that hurts no matter how powerful you are. Electra swoosh. And the flying man will be doing some damage as well. I'm going to try to keep the flying man alive, but I can't heal him, so he might be taking some damage from these enemies. But uh, it's going to be my personal challenge to see how long I can keep him alive. Uh, we do at whoa. We do have a lot of opportunities to to uh, to get more flying men. There are like five or six, and each time they die, a new grave will appear, and I'll also get a level up. Ness levels now 73. Guts one by one, HP one by one, PP one by one. So this is Ness's opportunity to prove himself once again. In fact, <laughs> speaking of Ness proving himself, let's talk to myself. Hey me, I found my cap that you lost. Ness got the baseball cap. Now, 
this cap actually has nothing special about it, so I'm actually going to drop it, because right next to myself is a present that contains a bag of Dragonite, which I'm probably going to be using fairly soon. Um, there, There is one more good item in this area besides the bag of Dragonite. Only one. Like, oh wait, no, no, there are two. That's wrong, sorry. There are two items. There's a weapon for Ness, and there's also... A, I believe a band of some sort so I want to try and find those but otherwise the rest of the items aren't that great uh, an electric swoosh and uh, there the item that I was talking about is coming up so I'm going to use the bag of dragon knight now so we can see what it does I have two others so I'm not really worried about this let's just see what it does because I haven't used it this let's play yet Sprinkled the bag of Drag Knight over his head. Yoinks! He turned into a gigantic fire-breathing dragon, dealt 350 damage. Not really. I don't really care about the Electric Swooshes because they will always just hit themselves, pretty much, because I have the Franklin Badge. But it was a good opportunity to use that item safely. Now, I wouldn't recommend farming here either, because there are those question mark enemies are very dangerous. Uh, there are some that throw super bombs every single turn, and there are other ones that are just straight up nasty. Okay, uh, the goddess band. If I recall, this is a very simplistic item. Um, it only does like a couple things. Yeah, it gives 80 defense, 30 luck, and just protection from hypnosis. So it's no, it's no pendant, but it still is really good. Uh... I have the Cherub's Band right now, though. Uh, that does... Wow. The only difference between the two items is a discrepancy of 10 defense. Look at that. That's it. They do the same exact things. So, actually, I'll be able to give the the band to Paula, probably. Okay, let's go this way, since this is the way I want to go. I want to avoid enemies, uh, and that is an enemy right there. So let's try to avoid him. And avoid this one. Yeah, I want to skip the battles. Like I said, I don't want to farm here. It's not really a good idea. Uh, the enemies are just really powerful. There are enemies that can call other enemies to the battlefield, like this one. I believe it can even call uncontrollable spheres to the battlefield, which is not a good thing. And usually, even though the loaded dice is a very weak enemy, uh, I want to take it out first, because otherwise there will be a lot of enemies coming and trying to give me hugs. So that's not something I'm into. And, uh, the, the Flying Man, or Falco, is putting in some serious work. Speaking of that, I hope you guys got that reference earlier. Because, if you didn't, I feel incredibly stupid. And this is a present that contains a Magican Bat. Um, yeah, I'm gonna drop one of these. Drop. Or, wait. How much, how much does my current weapon give? Okay, yeah, uh, it, the Magican Bat, oh wait, I can drop this. The Magican Bat, I'm really indecisive. I used to be indecisive, but now I'm not sure. But this item gives 12 offense over the 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 ultimate bat, so I'm going to be doing that, which is nice. So now I have a new item, and I'm managing my inventory very well, actually. I, I thought it would be hard because I only have one I really have one inventory slot to work with, but I'm I'm doing it. I am definitely doing it. Okay, let's see if we can avoid these enemies. And while I do, I can talk about something that makes that has a lot of relevance. Smash 4. I recently just played the Wii U version of Smash 4 for the first time ever, and I have to say, it's it's pretty good. Um I I didn't I haven't gotten Smash 4. Also, these enemies can use flash attacks, I believe, so they're dangerous. Um but oh wow, 747 damage. Okay, going back to what I was saying though. Um I, I didn't want to play Smash 4 or buy it until I could f get my hands on the GameCube controller adapter for the Wii U. Since the GameCube controller adapter, man, Ness, you're putting in work. Seriously, man. Good job. But I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to get used to the Pro Controller as a, as a Smash controller. But I ended up playing with the Pro Controller the other day, and it was... I, I actually respect the Pro Controller a little bit more now. I, I always knew it was a good controller. I backed it up. But my my problem with the controller was that... Okay. This is this is my philosophy on Nintendo. The Pro Controller was a fantastic uh, controller. It is. The the buttons work. Uh, I, a lot of people don't like how the, the right stick is actually on the top instead of where the C-stick was. But it's a great controller. There's not, like, any lag on it. It feels great in your hand, you don't get cramps or anything, but here's my problem with it. Nintendo already had a 5-star controller. I don't really care about that item. 
They already had a five-star controller. They had... Did I miss that? No. Did I? No, I'm going this way, because there's stuff here. Right? Right? Nessus levels now 74. Offense 1 by 2, defense 1 by 1, guts 1 by 1, vitality 1 by 1, HP 1 by 1, 11, PP 1 up by 1. But Nintendo really did already have a 5 star controller. They had the GameCube controller, which, if they had upgraded it just a little bit to basically be a pro controller, but the GameCube controller, I mean, they would have a controller that fits great in your hand, that runs just as well as the pro controller and has no lag, and is already a controller that people have gotten used to since their past two consoles have used it. That's what they should have done, but instead they used the the Pro Controller, and it's a great controller, but they already had something that worked. 755 damage to the Molecule C. The Flying Man is putting in some serious work. Like, Ness and the Flying Man are getting smash attacks like nobody's business, and I'm actually pretty worried because I think the uh, the Flying Man's going to die soon. That's sad, but he's he's done great things for me, so I I applaud you, Flying Man. You're the best guy. I also like you in Smash, even though you're not on the Omega stage or even that good. Okay, let's avoid the enemies and try to get get some work going. Uh, I kind of, I'm kind of done with my talk about the GameCube controller, mainly because I don't want to sound like I'm hating on Nintendo, but I also don't want to sound like I'm extremely supportive of that decision for them to ditch the, or for them to try and support both the GameCube and the Pro Controller. In my opinion, they should have just done the GameCube controller, but nonetheless, I, I, I found playing Smash 4 with the with the uh, Pro Controller to be extremely enjoyable. It's it's nice. I'm a NES main in Smash 4, so, and it wasn't because of this Let's Play, it's just because NES is high tier, he's fun, he combos well, and I like him. All right, Magikin is coming to an end. I still have my Flying Man alive. I wanna keep him that way. Uh, there are no one in 128 drops in this area, so I can be I can't avoid most of the enemies that I see. In fact, I will try to, because they're just, they're, they're pretty scary. Okay, those are Krakens. Wonderful. Can we please avoid them? <sighs> it doesn't look like it. Okay, let's see if I can make him despawn. If not, then I'm going to have to... Oh, good, 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 good. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, now this is bad, because now he's stuck. But if I can get him to circle around... Yes! Barely scraped by him! Oh, man! Okay, I, I'm, I'm trucking. I'm trucking. I'm avoiding the enemies. I want to stay near the pillar so I can stay safe. Uh, to my knowledge, there are no presents down here. Pretty sure there are none. So, let's just try to avoid the enemies. This was a dead end. Wonderful. And just kind of circumvent everything. Just very, very carefully. Okay, if we can lure him down here. Oh boy. Kraken blocked the way. Flying Man is probably going to die in this battle. Now, Krakens are pretty powerful, but they're also the same Kraken. So we should be able to defeat him quickly. Like I said, same Kraken. We're much higher level now. And if we can deal damage, oh boy. Don't hit my Flying Man. Okay, you didn't. Threw a punch. Smash attack again! Good job! Oh, he's dead. You did a good job. You did a great job, Flying Man. And I've gotten so many smash- What is this? Smash attacks galore! There was actually one um, in practice very early on in the Let's Play. Like, I'm talking extremely early. This was in, um... Right after we defeated the Sharks, I faced Frank, and like I said, it was practice, so I wasn't really commentating, um, and I, oh boy, and, uh, I got smash attacks, like, okay, I probably did a bash attack 20 times in the, in the, uh, the practice episode, and 18 times out of the 20, I got smash attacks, and this is just like it, but here's backing up my theory that the Mani Mani statue is still alive. Well, <laughs> this is Ness's dream world, so enemies that are that have been dead for a while can reoccur, but Ness's fear that the Mani Mani statue is still here still carries over, which makes me think that it made it through. I'm the evil part of your brain. You can't beat me. 
because you are the one who forced me into being. Nessa's Nightmare Attacked. This enemy has all the strongest attacks that I do. He has Rockin', he has Flash, he has it all. And thus, I'm going to have a difficult time against him. However, if I just keep up my strongest attacks, I should be able to pull this out. Ness has come a long way in, in these battles, and he should be able to pull it out here. I'm just going to start off the battle with a nice PSI uh, Rock and Gamma, and see if he does the same thing. Glorious Light, I believe that would inflict Flash or s Strangeness on me. I could be wrong. He comes with a lot of shields, and mainly this is a battle of who can last the longest. He has Rock and Alpha, so I'm going to have to constantly be healing myself. In fact, this early in the battle, I think it would be best if I started off with a Magic Truffle, so that I can outlast him when it counts. I recovered 150 PP, this should be good. Uh, he does have PSI Flash in the form of Glorious Light, and my PP counter got stuck and glitched. So I just wanted to see if I can outlast him. If he can run out of PP, since he can't do physical attacks, if he can run out of PP, then he'll be unable to do anything. I believe he does know a form PSI Magnet, but he'll still have to be doing that over using his stronger attacks. And he's trying to flash me really badly, okay. Let's just keep uh, bashing him and see if we can get some good sma- or keep- yeah, we keep bashing him, seeing if we can get some good ba uh, smash attacks. I can't- I can't use words with my mouth because, like I said, my voice is worn out from fireworks and everything. Uh, it's going to restore HP. I'm going to restore HP when I need to and see if I can- oh boy. Rockin' Omega, a move that even I don't know yet and it insta-kills me. But, thank goodness, I have a healing ability. I'm going to use that on myself and heal, my, heal me back to max. So he has moves that I have yet to learn. PSI, uh, PSI Rockin' Omega. Very strong attack, will insta-kill me no matter where I'm at, pretty much. Uh, and it's going to use a power shield. That is a physical shield, I believe? So I believe I should start using this. I think. Yeah, let's use that. Rockin' Omega, or Gamma. Less powerful, but still is going to deal damage while he has his shields up. Uh, let's just keep doing this, and I'm going to use another Magic Truffle this turn, unless he sh uh, shoots out another Rockin... No, okay, it's going to be Alpha this time. So, like, one da 100 damage? Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to use... Um, you know, no, I'm, I think I can go one more turn without it because I don't need 40 PP for a healing ability, so I should be able to extend this one more turn while I try to outlast him. So, okay, that's good. He recovered HP, but not enough to max him out, so I'm dealing more damage than he can heal. That's a good thing. That's something I, I need to see. Uh, let's use the Magic Truffle again, since I do have it, and that's, uh, that's kind of bad. Oh, boy. 500 damage will kill me, right? Yeah, that's gonna kill me, so let's go ahead and uh, restore that with Gamma. And he does rock and get uh, Alpha, so it's overkill, but I heal off two Rockins with one ability. That's nice. I'm glad I went second there, because if I had gone first, then I would actually have taken bo uh, the Alpha damage, but I didn't. So I should be able to continue this on, and not bash because he has a shield up, so just more Rockin. This is really just a battle of endurance. 300 damage. So I'm whittling him down. This is not going to do much. Just 70 damage. And I'm going to... You know, let's, th let's throw out a bash attack. I want to see how strong this shield is. Oh, never mind. The shield didn't get to kick in because <laughs> I killed him. Perfect. 89,000 experience. Ness's level is now 75. Offense 1 by 2, defense 1 by 1, speed 1 by 1, vitality 1 by 1, luck 1 by 1, HP 1 by 15, PP 1 by 2. Ness realized the power of, <laughs> you guessed it, PSI Rock and Omega. The same move that was used against us. That's, that's very appropriate. Ness heard a familiar voice at the center of the Sea of Eden. Gygus goal is to destroy you. Listen carefully. Everything in the universe can be could be destroyed, also universes, misspelt, uh, could be destroyed at the hands of Gygus. But he and his followers are also in trouble. The Apple of Enlightenment hasn't foretold that Gygus' attempt will fail. It is because of the existence of a boy named Ness. That's me. Listen. Free your mind and know what you must do. Your destiny has already been decided. You, I, where, we should, where should we go? You know deep within the reaches of your mind. 
S -s -s Saturn. Saturn. Saturn Valley. Yes. Go to the valley where Mr. Sat where the Mr. Saturn live. You'll get something new there. Soon. Magicant will be no more. We must be quick. Ness really heard his own voice. Go to Saturn Valley. Go to Saturn Valley now. Ness was filled with the power of Giant Step. Ness's speed increased by 5. Ness's vitality increased by 5. Ness was filled with the power of Lilliput Steps. Ness's guts increased by 5. His luck increased by 5. Ness was filled with the power of the Milky Well. His speed increased by 5 and IQ. Ness was filled with the power of the Magnet Hill. His vitality and luck went up by 5. Ness was filled with the power of the Rainy Circle. His guts and IQ increased by 5. Ness was filled with the power of the pink cloud. Ness's speed and guts increased by five. Ness's, uh, Ness was filled with the power of the lumen hole. Ness's luck and IQ increased by five. Ness was filled with the power of the fire spring. Ness's speed and luck once again increased by five. Instantly, Ness's mind cleared, and he realized that he had possessed great power. At that moment, Ness's psychic powers radically expanded. Ness gained 200,000 experience. Ness's level is now 76. Oh baby, offense went up by 3, speed went up by 1, guts went up by 2, IQ went up by 2, luck went up by 1. Sweet! Maximum HP went up by 150. That rocks. Maximum PP went up by 356. And finally, he realized he had the power of teleport beta. This journey is not a, has not been about power. It's been about Ness, N uh, Ness realizing his own enlightenment. He's been enlightened towards the powers that he had, uh, he had the whole time. He had teleport beta. He had all of this power, but he didn't realize it until just now. This has been a almost spiritual journey for him. Ness made all of the hidden powers his own. Ness ab absorbed the power of the land into his heart, and Magikent was no more. Now, you can wake up. Your friends are waiting for you. It is time to get up. Soundstone that Ness used used to have is now gone. What happened, Ness? You've been unconscious for a long time. You kept saying something. Saturn Valley? What's waiting for us there? Anyway, we need to teleport. So now, Ness is prepared for the battle to come. He is ready, and we're going to Saturn Valley immediately to see what's waiting for us there. The Apple of Enlightenment has spoken. Gygas will fall. And now, uh, is Ness actually, he's not at full health, is he? Status. No, he's not. Well, let me rest up real quick so I can show you how powerful Ness has truly become. You ready? I am too. Look. He has 750 HP and 550 PP. Look at his stats. They have all gone up by, like, leagues, by, by fathoms. They're gigantic now. Look at the rest of the party. They're nowhere even close. He's now level 76, while the closest is Paula at level 69. They're still in the 60s. He's late in the 70s. He's super powerful now. And now he's prepared, and the entire group is ready to take down Gygus. Like I said, it's been foretold. However, before we go there, there are a couple things I want to do next episode. One of which is a 1 in 28 item pickup. In fact, that's the only thing I want to do next episode, besides finalizing these inventories so we can prepare for the battle ahead. We've carried some baggage the entire time, and we've saved some great items for the very last, and now it's time to get those inventories back. 
Jeff will be getting multi-bottle rockets. Pooh will be getting some bottles of DX water and some great healing items that he can use on the other members of the group. Um, Paula will be getting, well she has the bags of Dragonite, but she'll also be getting some other stuff, like the Hand Aid, an item that we got very early on that restores all HP to a single person. And Ness will... I don't know, honestly. I don't know what he needs, but I'll be examining that in between episodes, and I'll meet you, meet up with you, and we'll look for the 1 in 20, 128 item, and see what is waiting for us in Saturn Valley. But, one thing's for certain, this adventure is coming to a close. The next couple of episodes will hold the end of the Earthbound Let's Play. I will see you guys next time for another Pal Plates Earthbound. I release new episodes of Earthbound Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And if you like this episode, then comment. And if you like this episode, and if you didn't like this episode, then comment. Tell help tell me how I can make the next episode so that you would like it. Next episode, I'm going to have a lot more rest, so I won't be nearly as crazy or slurry since my voice and body and mind are just tired. So I will see you guys next time for another Pal Plays Earthbound.